Did you know that one of the benefits of living with people who are different from you is how God can use those people to help you to become more Christ-like? Perhaps as you think about those in your own home or those within your relationship sphere, they have personality differences that aren't like you. How do you perceive them? How do you see their personality differences? Do they rub you the wrong way? Or do you see them as a means of grace that God is using to help you to become more like Christ? Well, in this video, I want to give you nine ways to assess yourself to see how people with different personalities from you are helping you to become more Christ-like. Hello everyone, Rick Thomas here. We're helping people live effective lives. I'm going to give you nine data points, nine ways that you can compare yourself to Christ to see how you are doing, especially in the context of living with people who are different from you. If you want to read the article from which this video comes from, I have it linked here in the description of this video. You also see it here on the screen, and so you can go to this article, you can listen to the podcast, Podcast, or you can read it to get a fuller explanation of what I'm talking about in this video. But we all live with people with different personalities than ours. Now, truly, we don't want people to be like us, though sometimes their personalities are so different that it does rub us the wrong way. Well, this is an excellent way for you to assess how you interact with them. And of course, how you interact with them will reveal to you if you're being Christ-like or not. Well, what does it mean to be Christ-like? I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list of what it means to be like Jesus, but I do want to give you nine data points. And so as I go through these, maybe you can hold up Jesus as a mirror and see how well you are reflecting Christ specifically in relationships with people who are different from you. Number one Jesus has forgiven you of the worst sin known to humanity, which is your crime against God. We have been forgiven by God. This is a huge idea, forgiveness I'm talking about. God has forgiven you, therefore you want to have a forgiving attitude toward those who are around you. And so one of the questions that you can ask yourself is, am I exhibiting a heart of forgiveness toward those around me? Why do I want to do that? Because God has forgiven me. Number two, Jesus does not condemn you. The verse that we love to say is, Therefore there is no more condemnation in Christ, as Paul talked about in Romans 8. Because God does not condemn you any longer, I am assuming that you are a Christian, it allows you to, well actually it provokes you, it motivates you to want to walk in humility, and then out of that humility, you no longer have a critical attitude toward others. And so point number two, there is no more condemnation, which humbles you and it gives you a non-critical spirit. Number three, Jesus creates and operates within a context of grace. We hear this right from the beginning, for by grace you are saved. We operate within these environments of grace which allows us to flourish and to grow up in Christ's likeness. How are you imitating Jesus in this one area? Are you creating environments of grace for those who are around you to flourish? And so the first three data points are Jesus has forgiven you, so you have a forgiving heart. Jesus does not condemn you, so you do not have a critical spirit. Number three, Jesus creates and operates within a context of grace. Therefore, you imitate that. You want to be like Christ and you create environments of grace for those within your sphere of influence to operate. Number four, Jesus receives and loves people who are different from him. That is the point of the entire video, living with people who have personality differences different from you. Not to accept someone because they are different from you. Well, that is not Christ-like. 
We could not be any more different from Christ, yet He took on flesh and became like us, and He brought us into His family. Point number four, Jesus receives and loves people who are different from Him. Number five, Jesus is tenacious in His desire to help you change. We have a relentless God who pursues people, and He has pursued you. He pursues you, not just in salvation, that is true, and thank God for salvation, but He also pursues us in our sanctification as well. How tenacious are you in pursuing those within your sphere of influence to help them to grow up in Christ? Point number five, Jesus is tenacious in his desire to help you change. Number six, Jesus has a profound love for you, which has a humbling effect. I'm talking specifically of the love of God. As you saturate your mind, as you cultivate your heart in the love that Christ has for you, it motivates you to want to demonstrate a similar kind of affection for those who are around you. How much affection do you have for those within your sphere? More specifically, for those who are different from you. Does the affection or the love of God that He has impressed upon you, does it flow out of you as you have affection for others? Point number six. Number seven, Jesus endured many hardships because of His desire to, to be a different, for you to be a different kind of person. Jesus is the prototype for us to emulate at this point. Many times we have to overlook offenses. We have to endure hard circumstances, relational situations with people. I'm not suggesting that you should be a victim of abuse in any way, but sometimes in our normal day-to-day -day interactions with people, we have to endure things that may not meet our preferences. Again, I'm talking about personality differences in this video. And so how do you react to others? Point number seven, Jesus endured hardships because he wanted us to be a different kind of person. How are you enduring to help others to grow up in Christ? Number eight, Jesus does not need you to be happy. Think about this. His relationship with, with his heavenly father, it was so thoroughly satisfying that it released him from being needy. Jesus didn't have an empty love cup. Like what the psalmist said in 23, my cup runs over. Jesus' cup ran over with relational fulfillment from his Father. Therefore, he was not a needy person on a horizontal level. Many people enter into relationships for what they can get out of it. What is in it for me? That's not how Jesus thinks about relationships primarily. He is more desirous to give, to invest in the relationship. Point number eight, Jesus doesn't need you to be happy. He is already content in Christ. How is your contentment in Christ releasing you from needing that person which compels you and propels you to invest into their lives? And then finally, point number nine, Jesus has shown transcendent patience towards you, which is the model that you want to emulate. If you live with people with different personality, uh, different personalities from yours, of course, if you live with anyone, they have a different personality uh, from you, or perhaps in the workplace and also within the church environment. Everybody is different. Praise God. Well, again, we were different from Christ, but he showed a transcendent patience. Transcendence means that it rises above. And so his patience is greater than what our normal experience is. But here's the thing. You have the power resident in you through the work of the Spirit of God to be patient with those who are different from you. And so nine ways to be like Jesus to others. Number one, you can forgive others. Number two, you can refrain from criticism. Number three, you create an environment of grace for them to flourish. Number four, you love those who are different. Number five, you want to help others change. 
Number six, you have affection for other people. And then number seven, you endure difficult relationships. Again, not talking about abuse, but talking about the normal day-to-day -day interactions that we have with people who are different from us. You endure difficult relationships. Number eight, you don't need others, which releases you to serve them. And then number nine, you are patient with all people. Nine ways that we can be Christ to people who are different from us. Again, if you want to read a fuller transcript of what I just shared with you, click on the link in the video description. You can read the entire article or you can listen to the podcast. And as always, if you want to talk to us about what you have just heard or maybe something else is on your mind, we have a free community forum that you can jump on and our team would love to serve you with whatever your questions may be. Finally, if you would, subscribe to our video channel. This will help us to grow and to reach more people organically. And so if you would subscribe, I would be grateful. Also, share this video with someone that you love, someone who is different from you. Maybe it will spur you on to some wonderful conversations. Thank you so much for watching the video.